This is a time of danger. Last year, more than 100 peacekeepers lost their lives. Let us now observe a solemn moment of silence to honor the 126 heroes from 38 countries who died while serving under the United Nations flag in 2014. In my three and a half years here on this job, more than 460 peacekeepers, meaning roughly one in every three days. Once every year, the UN remembers its dead. From Mali to Lebanon, from Congo to Kashmir, there are more peacekeepers than ever, and they're increasingly threatened. But it's only when the tragedies of Somalia, Bosnia, or Rwanda are brought up, where the UN failed in its mission, that these 130,000 soldiers and civilians of peace are mentioned. There was a time when I think we felt that the blue flag was, you know, the overall protector. Not so. We are now the specific targets of attack. Right now, in this difficult environment, blue helmets are patrolling insecure areas, disarming combatants, supporting elections, monitoring human rights, removing landmines, and much more. Let us also remember that the vast majority of UN peacekeepers hail from developing countries. We, the people of the United Nations, determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, do hereby establish an international organization to be known as the United Nations. In the spring of 1945, representatives from 46 states enthusiastically established the United Nations. They decided that the main goal of the UN should be to prevent the millions of deaths refugees, and endless destruction brought about by two world wars. But nobody could imagine that the UN would invent a rather strange concept, soldiers who keep the peace. This is where the idea of peacekeepers and using force to establish peace becomes a bit awkward at times. You are not there to fight, you are there to make peace. Seventy years later, faced with the disasters in Syria, Iraq and Ukraine, many think that the UN has failed. That facing the threats of transnational terrorism and collapsed states, this venerable institution, long-winded and bureaucratic, is out of its depth. But if so, why are there more and more peacekeeping missions? If it's easy to start a war, how do you make peace? Is it possible to impose peace? Ce qui est frappant, c'est que malgré toutes les divisions d'aujourd'hui, les États se rendent compte que s'il n'y avait pas le maintien de la paix, il faudrait l'inventer aujourd'hui. Parce que le maintien de la paix, c'est la dernière station avant l'enfer pour beaucoup de peuples désespérés. In southern...